RTX 5060 gets a big bump up. There's a 9800X3D scam going around and the 9070XT, more powerful than we thought in a weird way beat the 5080. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, March 11th, 2025. I want to remind you, we do have the RTX 5080 PC giveaway ongoing over on our Twitch stream, twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech. We're going to have um, some exceptional streams going on uh, this week for, for anybody who's been paying attention to what, what we've been doing here at UFD Deck, and you can watch and earn uh, entries into the giveaway for that 5080 PC. But let's go ahead and talk about the RTX 5060 because we discussed this in yesterday's episode of Hot News that we now have an indication of kind of when it's gonna be announced and when allegedly it's gonna launch, whether or not there's gonna be any stock remains to be seen, but the 5060 should be announced within the next 10 days and then should go on retail in April. And now we have some clear indication of what the specs are going to look like, and it looks like it's going to be a decent step up from the RTX 4060, 3,840 CUDA cores versus the RTX 4060's 3,072. So that's a 25% increase in CUDA cores right there. It's not going to increase in memory, still coming in at that eight gigabytes per second and that same 128-bit bus, but it will have GDDR7, so it is going to have faster memory than the previous generation. It's going to have more cores than the previous generation. Now, the question obviously will end up being, what is the price going to be? But with the 5070 coming in at the alleged $549 price point, then I think we'd have to have the alleged pricing of these lower end cards be very similar to what they were last generation. Now, obviously what they end up being at retail, especially due to uh, the ability to have them in inventory is a different conversation altogether. But in an ideal world, the 5060 is gonna cost $299 and then it's gonna be 25% more cores for hopefully that same price. I know a lot of you don't believe me when I say all this, and I get it. I'm just I'm just telling you what what could be possible, whether or not it's actually gonna happen. But with all of the weird stock issues that are going on, are you still waiting for your shiny new GPU? Because today's sponsor, Silverstone, is here to ensure that you're ready for it. And part of that is checking and seeing where your front panel IO headers are. That's the pins that connect your case's power, reset, LEDs, etc., where those are located on your motherboard. Some of the new generation GPUs have grown so big that they often block nearby motherboard connectors. This isn't even the biggest card, and look at how thunk it is. As case designers, Silverstone certainly have seen this problem firsthand, so they've created a nifty little adapter called the CP15. This ultra slim extender allows you to easily connect to a 10-1 pin front panel header on the motherboard, no matter how big of a GPU you have installed. It's so convenient and easy to use, you may want to pick one up even if you don't have an interference problem, and you just want to consolidate your case's mini connectors into one. You can pick up one for yourself via the link in the description below, and as always, thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring today's video. But if you happen to use one of the Silverstone CP15 on an X870 board while you're waiting your 9800X3D to come in from Amazon, you might want to just be a little suspicious because there was a tech YouTuber who was able to show off the fact that they got scammed by Amazon buying a 9800X3D. So in the video from Hardware Busters, they show that this is not a third party seller who sold them this 9800X3D. It was directly from Amazon and it's just a complete fake. If you notice anything about CPUs, the one on the right is the previous iteration of how AMD CPUs used to look, and the one on the left is what the 9800X3D should look like, not the one on the right with the pixelated text being printed on there. And it turns out the reason it's that way is because it's just a sticker that was slapped over an FX4100, an incredibly old CPU that apparently they're having some issues at Amazon with shipping out the right CPUs. Hardware Buster said that they're gonna be able to return it and get a refund from Amazon but they, they can't get the refund until they return the CPU. So uh, hopefully it goes smoothly for them, but just, you know, be wary and check your check your chips when you're, you're buying them all over the internet, which is where exactly Reese is gonna point you for buying tech products. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. And hey, welcome back. I got some deals for you guys, starting off with the Logitech Brio 100 1080p webcam, which you can currently pick up for only $24.99, making it $15 off. But then next we have the EVGR X01 Lite 1080p 60 external capture card for only $39.99 making it $60 off. And then lastly today we have this gorgeous little Zalman P30 premium micro ATX case plus three 120mm ARGB fans for only $79.99 making it $20 off. And hey with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time 
I'm gonna hand you back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, XFX has a nice deal when it comes to helping the community design and uh, make their GPU their own by providing 3D print files for some of their 9070 XT designs. Their Quicksilver GPUs have these magnetic wings that you can put on them, and they've now launched the STL file for you to be able to print the top and bottom version of that, and you can kind of just create your own iteration. As you can see here, they've kind of gone with some more simple colors, but you can use a whole lot of different colors for uh, spicing it up and making it look the way that you want. This is something I just want to encourage, right? Whenever I see GPU companies or any sort of PC tech company stepping out to give give customers something that is just off the beaten path, but enjoyable and just brings fun to the environment. That's exactly what's happening here and I wanna highlight it. So good on you, XFX, continue to do this. Don't shy away from it and more companies provide STL files for us to modify our GPUs. That'd be fun, it'd be great. I would wanna see that. And AMD wants to see that their technology is going into the PlayStation 5 Pro with Mark Cerny, one of the technical people behind Sony's architecture on the PlayStation, saying that, that the next generation of PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution that should be coming out sometime in 2026 is actually gonna be co-integrating with what we get on PCs right now, that is FSR4. So this exclusive RX 9000 series software that is for the 9070 9070 XT right now is somehow going to be fused into the PSSR upscaling that's going on on the PlayStation. Advancements being made on the PC is allegedly going to be helping the console get better performance. And if you want better performance out of your 9070 XT, well, we got some secrets on how to do that because Derbauer, in his testing of the RX 9070 XT Power Color Red Devil OC Edition, found that there's a way to get the 9070 XT to be a 50. And it's not the way that you would think because it's not via traditional overclocking. In fact, if you watch the video, his traditional overclocking methods are very frustrated by AMD's own software. You can't do things like increase the voltage. You don't have as much manual control. The OC and silent BIOS on the power color card doesn't really do much. That's not what actually allows you to get a faster card. Turns out the way to increase the speed on the 9070 XT is to undervolt it. And with an undervolt, of 170 millivolts, because if you went down to minus 200, it was unstable. The minus 170 pushes the 9070 XT to be faster than the RTX 5080 in the couple of tests that he tried out. So that's 4K Ultra in Cyberpunk 2077, as well as 3D Mark's Time Spy Extreme with the 9070 XT beating the 5080 Founders Edition, which is incredible just from undervolting a chip, it allowed it to lower the temperature and give it more high clocking headroom, but you couldn't manually overclock it to get to that point. It's a very strange setup. Maybe AMD needs to be tweaking the software a little bit, but it does look like there's significant performance headroom on the 9070 XTs where they can go even further beyond where they are right now. Now that might be a software limitation by AMD. Maybe we're gonna have to figure out some power Power profile stuff that has to get reworked in an updated BIOS, but it's clear that the value of the 9070 XT continues to go up, except for the prices continue to go up, so the value almost stays the same, but it's still allegedly for most people cheaper than an RTX 5080, which puts it in a very good place. Now, the only caveat to, to be noted here is the fact that yes, the 9070 XT can slightly beat an RTX 5080 when overclocked, but that's a stock 5080, which then you can overclock a little bit more. And in fact, our review of the RTX 5080 is finally going live this weekend, and we did a lot of overclocking tests on that to kind of find out what the headroom on the 5080 actually is. So get subscribed and stay tuned if you want to hear all of that. And uh, when it comes to the 9070 XT and 9070, I still haven't gotten mine uh, delivered, and we're going to be taking a trip, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to test it anytime soon, but hopefully UFT Tech will be able to review those at, in sometime in the near future and even also test the overclocking ourselves. And yourselves left comments in yesterday's episode of Hot News, so let's check them out. Stefan Etienne, the Verge representative, saying the human eye can't even see MSRP. I, I laughed at that one. I, I chuckled out loud when I first read it, which is why I gave it a heart. It's a it's a very good joke. Thank you. And then Arpon said there's a 50-50 chance of NVIDIA launching 50-50. I thought about making that joke, but it felt like low hanging fruit. So I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to give it to somebody else. So I'm just going to pass on that one and I'm going to try to figure out uh, other humor. So I'm glad that you did it because I, I left it there for you to pick up. You're welcome. Then Bezzy saying, so 5070 has 12 gigabytes, but 5060 Ti will be 16 gigabytes. That makes no sense. Actually, it does. It does make sense 
you might just not understand it. So I wanna take a second to explain why all of this happens. Now you might not agree with it and that's totally fine. You might want it to have more VRAM, but there is a reason why it's 12 and 16. And the reason for that is the memory interface. The memory bus width dictates how much memory a GPU can have. So you can see here on the RTX 5070, it has a 192 bit bus, which means it can only have a specific amount of memory chips that actually are able to be physically placed and communicate with the GPU. Now, theoretically, what's happening here is they have two gigabyte chips of GDDR7 that they're placing on to the GPU. So this means that they have six of them. So six times two is equal to 12. And that's what they're doing. They can't put eight because the 192 bit bus precludes that from happening. But when you go up to the 4070 Ti, it has a 256 bit bus, which allows them to place the eight memory chips, thereby getting you 16 gigabytes. So it does make sense. There is a reason for this to happen. So something similar is happening with the RTX 5060 Ti. It's on a 128 bit bus. Now, if we look at the 4060 Ti, which also had 128 bit, bus, you'll see that it had four memory chips, which allowed it to go up to eight gigabytes because these are each two gigabyte modules. But 128 bits also allows you to do an eight chip version, which is exactly what happens with the 4060 Ti 16 gig version. So you have what, what's listed here. You have four on the front, you have four on the back, each of those being two gigabytes, allowing you to get to 16 gigs. Now for the 5070 Ti, you can see that it has eight memory chips. The 5070 only has six. So it makes sense why the 5070 has 12 gigabytes. There is a practical, technical reason why it exists that way. Now there are ways to change this where it could potentially be more. There are three gigabyte chips for GDDR7. If they put three gigabyte chips on the six different chip sections, that would give them 18 gigabytes. But those are likely incredibly expensive and probably would raise the price above 549. Then you could also double from six to 12. And then what would that get you? That would allow you to have 24 gigabytes of VRAM on the RTX 5070, which is too much. It's just not, you're not going to utilize that except in very niche workloads. It's not going to be made for a gaming chip. And then you have double the amount of actual uh, memory, which is going to cost you even more. Or if you have the 12 chips and then they're one gigabyte modules, you're ending up with how much? 12 gigabytes, which is exactly where it's at. So the only way that they could potentially make it 16 is by reducing the memory bus width to drop it to 128 or increasing it to 256. And then that would create a weird situation where they're kind of overlapping what's above it and below it. So there is a reason for it. It doesn't allow it to make sense for the context of gamers, but there is a technical rational explanation as to why it's chosen. And the reason it's not more is because it's actually prohibitively cost expensive to do it more because it would have to be 24 gigs or the 256 bit bus would be something that they'd have to do differently. There's a lot more factors than just, you can slap whatever VRAM amount you want on a graphics card and it's just gonna work. There are other limitations at place, both economic as well as technical. And it's a lot easier to say, hey, why didn't they do this than to look into why they practically didn't do it. And then I just wanted to correct something from DJ Doppler saying, I love how Nvidia threatens legal action against a retailer for fire hazard claims saying it could harm a reputation as if they weren't actively destroying the reputation. Uh, it wasn't Nvidia who said that they were uh, retaining their legal rights to uh, pursue uh, legal action. It was MSI. Just so we're clear, Nvidia didn't say that you're accusing a company who didn't actually do that. It wasn't NVIDIA, it was MSI. And I'm me, but me not here, hot news over. <laughs>